Right, okay guys, in car survival kits. I'm gonna keep this as simple and sweet as I can. The first thing is with your in-car survival kit, it's based on you. It's based on your requirements, what you do, where you go, what you're going to need. So my kit is probably a bit bigger than everybody else's. Ooh. But it's based on what I do, where I find myself, and the fact quite often that there may be multiple people with me. So it's always something worth bearing in mind. Now, within your vehicle, the first thing you should always think about, we'll get these easy bits out of the way first. First thing is always water. Whether it's just a simple Nalgene bottle, litre of water, or whether it's a slightly larger container. Now, you should, excuse me, lean away. So you should always have water in your vehicle. Always have spare water and always make sure it's drinkable water. It's, you can top up washer bottles, you can top up radiators, clean your hands, wash things out your eyes. Water's there for that reason, as well as hydrating, okay? So always make sure you've got water. Obviously be aware that if the conditions it's going to freeze and that, you might want to take it out, carry it indoors and take it back out with you, which is this time of year what I quite often end up doing, is lugging the water in and out. It's a balls, but it works. Next thing you should have in your vehicle, I keep a rucksack in there because the entirety of this kit and my first aid kit in the car and any other bits and pieces I've got in the car, like a wool blanket, like a spare coat and so on, if I have to bug out, tab home, can go into the Bergen. I can sort through this kit, organise what I need to carry for almost any eventuality, sling it in the Bergen and lug it home with me. Okay, so again, it's not just survive in the car, stay with the car. If I had to tap home, take what I need for the situation and the distance, and tap home. So, the sleep system that I carry in the car at the moment is quite simple. I have, in there, a Wubi, okay? I have, which consists of, one US poncho, one US poncho sleep system, the Wubi. It's brilliant. So that's my sleep system. It tucks away into that. Simple. Or I'd suggest a small sleeping bag. Alongside that is a heavy duty reflective anodized, anodized aluminium blanket, which working in conjunction with this makes a nice, simple, lightweight, easy to carry sleep system that can keep me, and if need be, a couple of other people warm. On top of that is a second poncho, British uh, Dutch Army issue poncho, so I can rig a tarp shelter and my sleep system underneath it. Now, two ponchos, because there's often two of us in the car, two waterproof systems. You'll see in the bag in a minute, I also carry a Gore-Tex bivy bag. So, these systems are kept separate, usually actually in the Bergen ready to go. This kit, when opened out, and this is a Valen bag. The Valen is a military metal detector used for detecting metal. So, there we have my bag and contains everything I need, whether it be in an emergency, whether it just might be the car's broken down, oh no, damn it, we're gonna be stuck here overnight, let's get something to eat, to, oh dear, SHTF, I'm gonna to have to walk home, and this might take several days, okay? So there's everything in between within this. Now, please, again, bear in mind, as I've shown on previous videos, I already have wool blanket, major first aid kit, lots of other kit in the car, which I would pick through. I wouldn't necessarily take the whole first aid kit, I'd pick through it. These are the items that are gonna be most essential to me. Throw them in the bag and go. And this bag also I would go through. Not everything in here I would take, I would adapt from the kit. But, just to give you an idea, first thing in there, handkerchief, okay? Very simple, very light. Easy to carry, takes up no space, can be used for everything from binding wounds 
to improvise in face mask, filter, so on. Alongside that is a chamade. Now, this simple, lightweight piece of material adds warmth, comfort, can be used as a towel. It's 101 uses, can be used to keep the sun off your head. It could just be used to apply a little bit more warmth, okay? I love these things. They're soft, they're comfortable. You know, quite often, I would just throw it around my shoulders just literally for the comfort of it being there. Wonderful bit of kit. So, Shemag and a hanky. So we'll start this end of the kit and we'll work our way down. So, this bag, this tag contains a clothing change. So, it's a simple clothing change, nothing in depth. Good pair of wool socks. Merino um, long john bottoms. Merino long sleeve top. Change of underwear. Simple as that. Okay. Now, if it needs to be a sleep system, the merino long johns can be my sleep system, or the rest of my clothes are airing and drying through the night. Okay. Or if it's really, really cold, they can obviously go under my kit. I can double up on my socks and so forth. Try and keep them separate. Try and keep one dry kit, one wet kit if necessary. And this bag is a simple wash kit. Personal hygiene, okay, can be the difference between making it and not making it, purely and simply from a comfort point of view. So in this kit here, okay, alcohol gel, great, sterilises things, keeps things clean. If you've got an injury, you can clean it with that. It'll make you great teeth, but it'll work. Toothbrush, look after them dentures. Johnson's um, soap, all over soap, it's actually a shampoo soap, but it won't sting your eyes. And imagine if you're trying to wash yourself in a stream or something like that, you don't want to be throwing harsh chemicals into the water. Uh, and again, you haven't got the luxury of being able to wash your eyes out and all the rest of it. So something that's a gentle soap. Toothpaste goes alongside toothbrush. Vaseline, great for personal admin, sorting out chaps, sores, issues like that. If you've got wind burn on your cheeks, it'll help to protect from that. Okay, that says Nordic Spirit. In actual fact, some foot powder, okay? The foot powder can double up as a talc if need be, but ideally for your feet, looks after your feet. And a simple face towel. That's all that I carry in there. That is a simple, basic, personal hygiene admin kit. Just keeps you a bit more comfortable, makes it a bit easier to get through the day. Next thing in there, okay, British Army issue bivvy bag. Now, that's kept separate from my sleep system. So in the event I come across a casualty, am a casualty or have an issue where I need to maybe hide something or hide somebody or just shelter them from wind and conditions, I've got it. It's not essential to the rest of my kit. It's a standalone system. So I can get to my sleep system. If somebody's with me, well, they're going to have to stay fully dressed. At least I can give them that. Okay. If I need, if the weather was really that bad, I could I could multiply off of it. Small axe, small folding saw, go lock. Okay, it's all the tools that are in there. I'm already carrying my other bits and pieces with me. I've already got my Leatherman with me. So again, these are just some extras carried in the bottom there, so that if I needed to build a shelter. I can do, if I needed to adapt the situation, I can do. All right, good pair of gloves, okay? Don't care what gloves you use, get yourself a good pair of gloves. Um, I don't personally like wearing gloves, but I've got them just in case. So, as I said, water purification. So soy mini, uh, soy squeeze, a mill bank bag, some purification tablets, okay? And a couple of clear plastic sealable bags kept in that pocket there and this one fire kit um, quite simple spare cigarette lighter paracetam rod cotton wool balls vaseline keep it simple keep it sweet can light a fire anywhere with those and bear in mind that i've already got my um edc with me and I've already got a fire lighting system around my neck. So, again, I've already got some kit with me. 
in this pouch here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ration packs or, or boil in the bags. Easy, ready to go of your choice. One pack of paracetamol. One pack of ibuprofen. I've already got a first aid kit in the vehicle. Those are just some backup basic painkillers that you may need. Okay, gas bottle speaks for itself. Nice big one, full, ready to go. If I use that one, I swap it out for another new one. This kit is always, the idea of this, it's always ready to go. If I use anything, I come home, I replace that item. So the kit is a ready kit. It means quite, quite honestly, I don't have to lug this in from the car. I can sit there and go, okay, I need to replace the gas, bring in the part warm one, swap it out for a new one. They've used a couple of boil in the bags, bring out a couple of new ones. Okay, the kit stays in the vehicle. If you start bringing the kit indoors, outdoors, indoors, outdoors, you take items out, you lose items, and then when you really need it, it's not there. So, simple pot, okay, so one pot wonder. So okay, I can do the boil in the bags and that, boil water in that, I can make drinks, I can sterilise water. The other bonus is, or, or the other thing to think about, is cups. Now, I've got a couple of cups floating around in the car all the time. I use the thermal mugs, simple little lifesaver thermal mugs. There's always two of those in the vehicle. And that means if I pull up somewhere and I want to go and get a brew, I can go get a brew, put the lid on, back into the car, into the cup carrier, it's there with me and I can just have it as I go. Same thing for cats. So if I'm stopping at the services, some of them get a bit funny about it, but the majority of them are okay. You go in, yeah, could I have a top up in that please? Just a coffee or a hot chocolate, whatever you need. Put the lid back on, doesn't spill, doesn't make a mess, simple. So you should always have a mug system in the vehicle. Um, cook, cook system of choice for in the vehicle, MSR pocket rocket, okay. Lives in the top of the pot so I can find it, screw it together, make its need to go. There is one of my homemade neck knives, lives in there. Nice, simple, okay, sharp, reliable, small, basic, go with it. Wipe down cloth, yeah, wipe down cloth, cleaning the pot out. If I need to clean my hands, I've got some warm water in there. I can use that as a, as a hand scrub, whatever I need to. And a selection of coffees okay that all lives in there so pretty much that's brew kit all sorted hot meals all sorted now i have to stand up to get to this move it up a little bit there's also things like flapjack bars in there great calories easy to eat very pleasant and enjoyable and i like them mixing out torch system okay now usually because this is the second time I filmed this. First time didn't come out so well. So normally the battery's turned round, but this is a torch system and it's a red torch. Has no white light, it's purely red light. Now, the reason for that is, quite simply, if I'm moving by night, I don't want to damage my night vision, okay? If I use a red light, it's less damaging to my night vision. It also means if I'm walking down a busy road and it's dark, if I hold that in my hand that way with it switched off and hold it in my hand like that or strap it to my kit, I'm showing a red light behind me, okay? And this one does have a small amount of adjustment on the, the focal beam. But not a huge amount. So again, that torch lives in this kit as a backup. I don't need it to be tactical, I'm not tactical these days, however, it is a handy thing to have. This pocket here, spare lines, power cord, ready to make shelters if I needed to. So that brings me to the last pocket. So, in here, bag heaters, or ball in the bag heaters, okay? I have four there, simple, Add water, creates heat. Now, this works two ways. It's not just for heating meals. It means I can heat water using those without the gas. Okay. I can heat water, drop it into a Nalgene bottle. I've got a hot water bottle. 
right? I can then use that to warm my inside of my clothes, warm somebody up, help somebody to recover, okay? So it's, it's great for heating food, don't get me wrong, but it also provides hot water. And that hot water you can't drink. You can't use it for making a brew. However, there's no reason why you can't use that hot water as a heat source by putting it into a container, okay? So always worth having with you, always. And in this pocket here, finally, it's a selection of nibbles and munchies, things like this fork. There is some couscous in there. There's some biscuits in there. There's some top-up brew kit from a, a ration pack. There's a couple of cinnamon buns. There's trail mix. There's a couple of packets of noodles. And that on top of seven days' worth of scoff. Okay, that's a get-me-home kit in a worst-case emergency. All right. So, and you don't need. As you can see, it doesn't take a huge amount of space, right? You don't need necessarily all this kit, okay? You could you could make up quite quite a small kit as long as you've covered the basics of food, water, and shelter. You're laughing, so get that back in there. Back in there, back in there. Now, so that goes into there quite simply. So that is my basic, my in-car survival kit. And that is, like I say, that is designed to adapt. A couple of days or a day or so in the car in an emergency, or I'm having to tab home, okay? Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that's given you some ideas. Like I say, you don't need to carry two separate bags. You can put everything you need like that into a simple burden. You can have one bag ready to go, grab and out of the vehicle. Um, Mine's a bit more in depth because I do a lot more. Simple as that. I try and separate the two of the kits up. My first aid kit is a massive first aid kit. I am a first aider, so therefore I carry the kit in a first aid kit on the back of the seat ready to go for emergencies. Not everybody's going to do that. Um, this kit also, if I'm dealing with an emergency situation somewhere, it may have got to the point where I'm just making people bruise. I can do that yeah so think about your in-car kit what you need what you want to carry with you what you would require and the best way of thinking about that to be honest with you is just sit down and think right okay doke sit and look at your loved one and go if we were stuck in the car now in the conditions that are outside with a non-running vehicle what would i want to have with me right and chat about it amongst yourselves. Sit there. You're not all going to carry ready meals. You're not all going to carry biscuits. Go through the things you would want to carry. Okay. Guys, it's Hampshire Outdoors Survival. This is Mickey. I'm waffling now. So I'm going to end it there. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. Love those you do. Forgive those you don't. And as always, peace and light be upon you all. Till next time. Mickey out.